What's happening guys, Safety Liner C2 here. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at this 1973 Dodge School Bus chassis brochure. So first off, let me just say that if you want to take a better look at this brochure or check out any other brochure that I have, you can go to my Flickr, which is linked in the description, and find plenty of literature on there. Anyways, we're just going to flip through this brochure. It's not very long, but I'll show you what's on every page. So this is the front cover of the brochure. There's not too much here. It's pretty simple. We do have a Thomas Dodge, which is interesting. That bus came from Calvert County Public Schools, which is in Maryland, and it's bus number 184. But otherwise, there's nothing too crazy about this. This is just a pretty stock image of a school bus making a stop. And that's what they put on the front cover. So this is the Dodge B300, which is pretty much just a Dodge van with warning lights on it. Here's the perfect way to get a low-cost means of transportation for schools that don't require a standard-sized bus. And it offers a combination of safety, comfort, and convenience features not available on other compact school buses. There's room for 14 school children, plus the driver with seat roominess to spare. And with all the seats removed, you can use this B300 to carry school equipment and supplies. It offers a 318 cubic inch V8 engine and is available with power steering, AC, and an automatic transmission. You can get it in multiple different colors, including yellow, and it is available in two different wheelbases, 109 inch and 127 inches. Finally, there are a couple different seating capacities as well. 5, 8, 12, and 14. So I'm not quite sure if Dodge would put the warning lights on this van and just send it straight to the school district. I know there were some companies that offered warning light kits to where you could just buy it and put it on a van yourself. This could have also come from a type A manufacturer such as Collins, although I don't think that Collins was working with Dodges at this point. The next page shows us the S600 chassis, which is what would be used on Type Cs. If you take a look in the top right, you can see a drawing of one of the chassis showing off the different dimensions of it. Directly below that gives us a little bit more information, showing us that there were four different wheelbases on this one, 197, 221, 240 and 258. Standard on all Dodge models are drive shaft guards that help confine the shaft in case of damage. The tailpipe extends 5 inches on the 221 and 240 inch wheelbase models and 8 inches on the 197 and 258 wheelbase models beyond the rear of the frame to carry exhaust fumes well away from the vehicle. Models with the 361.2 and 361.3 V8 engines have a standard aluminized muffler. This same heat and corrosion resisting muffler can be had as an option on the 318 3 engines. All models have either a full floating hypoid or spiral bevel rear axle for quiet operation. Two speed axles are optional at extra cost. Clutches are either 12 or 13 inch models depending on the engine size. Hydraulic actuation makes them easy to operate. The rugged and smooth four speed new process model 435 transmission is standard. Dodge model S600 chassis can be had with a extra cost Allison AT540 four speed automatic. Frames have straight carbon steel side rails and alligator jaw cross members for added strength. Standard braking on all models is vacuum hydraulic with an extra capacity 1000 cubic inch vacuum reserve tank with a vacuum gauge and buzzer. Another option is full air brakes. The bottom half of the brochure shows what the S600 would look like on the big six chassis at that time. It's really interesting seeing this and although you might not be able to make out much, it does give us a good side view profile so that if you do just see a side shot of the bus, for example, we can reference it to this and figure out what exactly it is. The fourth page shows us a overhead view of the bare chassis and talks about engines. Front shock absorbers are standard with shocks at the rear as an option. Long wide front semi-elliptic leaf springs have a double wrapped eye at the fixed end for extra reliability. Standard steering is worm and roller with power steering optional. The parking brake is transmission mounted and completely independent of the service brakes. It is controlled through an Orschelin lever which lets the driver adjust the brake from his seat. Location for the standard 70 amp hour battery is the engine compartment. An optional location is at the frame side rail. All manual transmissions are synchro shift. A 4 speed automatic transmission is optional on model S600. Steering wheel, pedals, transmission lever, and other controls are positioned for the driver's comfort and convenience 
and meet the current School Bus Manufacturers Institute standards. A one-quart full-flow cartridge-type oil filter is standard on the 318 cubic inch V8 engine. A two-quart replaceable cartridge-type filter is included on the 361 cubic inch V8 engine. Rear suspension is variable rate. Cam brackets automatically adjust the spring to the passenger load for a smooth ride empty to fully loaded. The 318-3 V8 is standard on the buses, but you also have the option for a 361 heavy duty V8. The fifth page shows us all of the specifications. The seating capacity ranges from 48 on the 197 inch wheelbase model up to 66, which can be found on the 258 inch wheelbase model. Below that in yellow shows us alphabetical specs that someone specking a bus might be interested in knowing. It's broken down into two different categories for the models, the 197 and 221 inch wheelbase models and the 240 and 258 inch wheelbase models. You can see what's standard and offered across both models such as the air cleaner or the parking brake and everything in white is optional. Finally we get to the back page of the brochure which shows us the B300 specifications. The Dodge B300 has a special school bus package that contains convenience, safety, and heavy duty equipment. Included are a 60 amp alternator, a 70 amp hour battery, banded front door main glass, headliner in passenger compartment, automatic door switches for interior dome lights, front and rear roof mounted warning lights, and manual switch for roof lights. So that confirms that this would come straight from Dodge and would avoid any type A manufacturer. Finally down at the bottom we can see that this brochure is dated August of 1972. Anyways there is your look at the brochure, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other brochures that you want me to do a video on, let me know in my video request form which can be found in the description of any one of my videos and make sure to check out my Flickr for up to date literature pictures. With that that's going to do it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching, I always do appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe down below, it's a magical white button that says you are now subscribed to Safety Liner C2. Make sure you comment above this video below it to the left or to the right, I don't know where they put it, I don't care where they put it. Make sure you also give this video a thumbs up or I am going to show off the StarCraft Dodge brochure next. And make sure you also share this video with a friend, show it to your mom, show it to your dad, show it to a guy on a random street. I don't care, don't let anything happen to you. So yeah guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching.